Okay, this is topic 44, concavity continued. So on this one, we're going to try to put all the knowledge that we have so far together and uh, to draw the graph of f of x eventually. So let's talk about a few things that we know, right, from as basically from the beginning of this class all the way up till now. This is these are things that we should know. All right, now they're calling this open interval i, right? So don't worry too much about this. But they're saying if let f of x be defined on an open interval i containing c. So there's some c value in there, okay? So if f is increasing on i, well, that's because the derivative is positive, right? And we talked about that many, many times. If the derivative is positive, then f is going to be increasing. If f is going to be decreasing, then the derivative is going to be negative, right? So if you kind of know this intuitively, you might want to just leave it like that. If not, you might want to write, you know, f prime of x is positive. That's the same thing. Okay. However, if you know what this means, then you don't have to write that. Now, it says here there is a local minimum at C because, well, remember, when do I have a local minimum? Well, that happens when the derivative changed from negative to positive. Now it says at C, okay, so I have to kind of talk about this regarding to this value C. So F prime change from negative to positive at that C value. So remember, we have a minimum if around this value the derivative change from negative to positive, all right? And there's a local maximum if the derivative changed from positive to negative at that same value, okay? So now the ones that we just finished learning is if f is concave up on i, well that's because the second derivative is positive, right? So this is the stuff we just talked about on lesson on topic 43. If the second derivative is positive, then f is going to be concave up on that same interval, which in this case they call this interval i. All right, f is going to be concave down if the second derivative is negative. Okay? Now, the point c, f of c is a point of inflection. So remember, where do we have a point of inflection? Where the point of inflection actually happens when the second derivative changes sign. sign at x is equal to c in this case. And I'm only saying c because that's what they're saying, right? So the point of inflection c is going to happen where the second derivative changes sign, whether that's from positive to negative or negative to positive. It doesn't matter. The point is that you have a point of inflection when the second derivative changes sign. All right, on, on this one, this one kind of takes a little bit of thinking, all right? Now, it says that f is concave upwards on i because the first derivative, well, what can you say, right? If the first derivative is increasing, oops, increasing. If the first derivative is increasing, right, meaning that you would have something that would look like that, right, this would be the graph of the derivative. If this is increasing, that means that the second derivative is positive. So this one's kind of related to that one, okay? So again, f is concave upwards if the derivative is increasing. All right, now f is going to be concave downwards if f is decreasing. So same idea, you would just have something that looks like that, and that would be on f prime, all right? So if f prime is decreasing, that means that the derivative on this would be negative. Right, or the second derivative on this would be negative, which implies that f is, con there's a concave down on that spot, okay? Now, these are the two that I think are the difficult ones to understand, but if you have any questions on those, make sure and ask. So again, these two are kind of related to those two, okay? Now, this one, so now we're going to, given all this information that's given to us, right, we're going to try to figure out, uh, a way to graph this. 
So let's make sure we understand all of this. So right here, remember, this is the derivative. Okay, so it says right here the derivative is positive. So that means that the graph of f is going to be increasing. Now, right here, it also is increasing. Okay, notice that you have a horizontal asymptote. Sorry, excuse me, a horizontal tangent line at zero, or sorry, at this point, x1, which I don't know what that point is, but at point x1, I have a horizontal tangent line. All right, and right here, I want to be decreasing. All right, so whatever happens, this has got to follow this pattern, okay? Now, the thing that we're not so familiar with is the second derivative. So if the second derivative is negative, I'm going to be concave down. And remember, um, this is going to kind of help me out a little bit. If I'm increasing and I'm concave down, the, that part of the graph should look like this. Okay. Now, the next part, this right here would still, this would be concave up. Concave up. All right, so I'm concave up and still increasing, right? So if I'm concave up and still increasing, it's going to look something like that. And then finally for this last part, this is the second derivative is negative, so therefore this is going to be concave down again. But notice that on this one, I'm concave down and decreasing. So if it's going to be concave down and decreasing, it's going to be something that looks like that. So this is going to sort of going to help me, okay, to graph the uh, the f the f function. Okay, so now really up to you how you do it. This is, I'm going to say this is point x1, this is point x2, and this is point x3. Okay. Now what I'm going to do here is I'm actually going to uh, draw a little dotted line, if you will, only to help me out. Again, just like we've done in the past, this dotted line, all they're, all they're doing for me is just to kind of give me a reference to help me out, to break this apart in my brain so it makes it easier. So remember, the first part is going to look concave up all the way until x to the first, all right? So the first one is going to look like this. Now, I don't know really how high on this is going to go, but I know it's supposed to look like that. Now, from that point... All right, from x1 all the way to x2, I'm going to be concave up and still increasing. So I'm going to switch concavities here, and I'm going to be increasing. Okay. And then from x2 to x3, I'm going to be decreasing. Excuse me. Uh, let me think about this for a minute. I lost my train of thought. Uh, okay, so I'm going to be from concave up to concave down, and I'm going to be decreasing. Oh, I'm... S okay, okay. Yeah, I see that now. All right, I'm still increasing between X1 and X3, right? So notice that I'm still increasing all the way from X1 all the way to X3. So I'm still going to increase, but I'm going to switch concavities. So that's going to switch concavities here. So there's maybe a little part that I should have written here that, you know, I had that going, that I didn't write that. Okay, and then finally, on this last part, uh, from x cubed and be, oh, sorry, x3 and beyond, I'm going to be decreasing and it's going to be concave down. So after that point, I'm going to keep doing this. Okay, so it's going to just keep going down. So now, what I know for sure, okay, what I know for sure is that I switch concavities here and here, and those are the points that are given to me. All right, so notice that x1 and x2, um, I switch concavities. So right here, this would be these two would be points of inflection. So those two points are points of inflection because I switch from concave down to concave up here. And then I switch from concave up to concave down.
Okay, so notice that those are the points that they happened at. Now, at this point, at this point, notice that I'm looking at the derivative now. Notice that I switch from uh, the derivative being positive to the derivative being negative. So at this point, I have a maximum. I have a max because y prime changed from positive to negative, right? Which is what caused this curve to appear like that. Okay, so now, so that's how you do that. Okay, so we're gonna, I'm gonna cut and turn to the back. So I believe this could be the difficult part on 44, right? So stick with me. All right, so we're gonna take it one step at a time here. So notice that right here, it tells us that the figure shows the graph of f prime. So remember that this right here is f prime. And I'm gonna write that on there so I don't forget. So this is the function, this is the, this is the graph of f prime. All right, and it even gives it the interval between negative seven and seven. Okay, so let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So I'm gonna put a point here so don't forget that there's an interval that I need to respect. Okay, so I'm gonna go between negative seven and positive seven. Yeah, that's seven right there also. Okay, so this is negative seven and this is positive seven. Okay, and it says the graph of f prime has a horizontal tangent at x is equal to negative three. Negative one, negative two, negative three. So right here I, ha I have a horizontal tangent on this one, right? So it says the graph of f prime has a horizontal tangent. There at x is equal to two, which is right here. And I also have another one at five. Okay. And I also have a vertical tangent. I have a vertical tangent here. So I don't know what to do with that, but basically I have a vertical tangent there. Okay, so having that information, all right, that this is the graph of the derivative, I'm trying to find the following for f of x. So I'm not really talking about this graph. I'm talking about the graph of f of x, which I cannot see, okay? So on A, They're asking us, where is this increasing, where is this decreasing? Well, remember, from back at the beginning of the year, we talked about if the derivative is positive, then function f, which is the original one, is increasing. All right, so where is the, the derivative positive? Well, the derivative is positive when this curve is above this line, which happens to be the x-axis. So when I'm above the x-axis, and therefore I'm going to be increasing on function f. So I'm going to be increasing. And please notice that I'm going to be increasing with 7 included, because even this point right here, this represents a positive slope. Okay, so I'm going to go between negative 7 and all the way to here. All right, so between negative 7 and this point right here, which is negative 5 not including negative five. And I'm also gonna be increasing between negative five, okay? And all of these, remember every one of these points represent a positive slope all the way to about here, right? So from here to here, I'm still increasing. So I'm gonna go between, uh, let's see, negative one, it looks like, between here and here. And then finally, I don't drop below the x-axis, so the slope right here is zero, okay? There's a horizontal tangent line here. But then after that, all right, after that, then my derivative is positive because it's above the x-axis. So I'm also gonna go between five and seven, including seven. Okay. Now it's asking me to justify, it's gonna be increasing because the derivative is positive, right? The derivative is positive. Now it's going to be decreasing It's going to be decreasing Let's see, 
it's going to be decreasing right here. Let's see, that's negative 4, 5, between negative 5 and negative 1. All right, so I'm going to be decreasing in that interval. And it's the same reason, well, almost the same reason, because the derivative in this case is negative. So if the derivative is negative, then the graph of f of x is decreasing. Okay, and if the derivative is positive, then f of x is going to be increasing, or the graph of the original function. So we're done with that. Let's go to part B. Okay, so in part B, they're asking us to find the relative maximum and relative minimum. All right, so again, so far, nothing new. Those two you should be familiar with. You're going to have a relative maximum where you go from positive to negative. And in this case, you did. You went from positive. You went from a positive slope to a negative slope, right? So right here, you have one maximum. All right, so I have a relative relative maximum at x is equal to negative 5. And notice that nowhere else do I go from positive to negative. This is negative, positive, 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 right? So nowhere else. So I only have one relative max. And when it's asking us to justify, we're just going to write that there's relative max at x is equal to negative 5 because the f prime of x goes or changes, whatever you want to call it. I'm going to write changes from positive to negative. All right? And that's how I know that I have a relative max. Now I have a relative minimum. Let's see. I have a relative minimum here because I went from negative to positive. All right, so I went from negative slopes to positive slopes. So right here, I have a relative minimum. Because f prime of x changes from negative to positive. OK, now on c, it says the intervals of concavity, they want to know the intervals where the concavity is up and they want to know the intervals of the concavity is down. Okay? So remember when we're talking about when we are talking about concavity, all right, then we're talking about the second derivative. So in this case, what I'm actually talking about is I'm talking about the derivative of this function right here. Now you may not know a whole lot about that, and that's okay. That you don't really need to know exactly what each derivative is here. But what you need to kind of realize, all right, then you're going to have concave up, and that's at the beginning of the notes. Basically, what I'm asking you is, forget about that this is the derivative. If I'm just asking you about this graph, if I'm asking you, okay, this is the graph of f prime of x, where on this am I going to have derivatives that are, in this case, I'm looking for concave up, where am I going to have derivatives that are positive, all right? So... Notice that right here, I'm going to have derivatives that are positive. Why? Because every tangent line would be a positive slope right here on this line. All right, so I'm going to be concave up where the derivative, where on the derivative, I'm increasing. If this is increasing right here, which it is, all right, that I'm going to say that this part right here is going to be concave up, that interval. Okay, so I'm going to be concave up between negative 3 and positive 2. Again, why? Because I'm increasing. All right, if the derivative is increasing, then therefore, the second derivative would be positive, And therefore, that was, means that on the graph of f of x, you're going to be concave up. All right, where else am I increasing? Well, I'm increasing between 5 and 7. All right, so I'm also increasing between 5 and 7. Okay. I guess I know that I said this like a thousand times, so that's because f prime of x is increasing. Okay. So one more time, you're going to be concave up because the second derivative is positive, and that's true because this is increasing. All right. So if f prime, if the first derivative is increasing, that means the second derivative is positive which then implies that 
uh, on that on these intervals on graph of f of x, you're going to be uh, concave up, right? You're gonna have a concavity going up, all right? Now, same idea on concave down. If you're looking for where is this concave down, well, I have to go look and see where I'm decreasing. So if f prime, if f prime of x is decreasing, then that's gonna be concave down. So we have this right here, okay? And then now, remember, it's also decreasing here, but don't forget that I have a vertical tangent here. So what is the derivative at a vertical tangent? Well, the vertical tangent is non-differentiable. So this is why I have to split it up like this. Between two and three, and then between three and five. All right, so notice that, I, again, I did this part right here only because I have a vertical tangent here, and I cannot take the derivative at that point. All right, so I don't know what the, deriv the derivative here is undefined. So uh, the, to justify, we we're going to say because f prime of x is decreasing. All right, so that's that. Now we're going to go to part D. Now we're asking, uh, find the x coordinates of the points of inflection, justify using f prime of x. All right, so we're going to use that to justify. So the points of inflection, all right, in this case, Okay, now you have to think about it, right? Remember that we talked about the points of inflection where the second derivative changes sign, all right? So the reason they gave you this vertical tangents here is because those are the points where you're going from, in this case, decreasing to increasing, meaning you would have a second derivative that would be negative followed by a second derivative that would be positive. So your points of inflection would be where the horizontal tangent lines on f on this derivative function would be located. So your points of inflections happen to be here, here, and here. So at negative three, two, and five. Now why? Because since we're trying to use f prime, we're gonna say uh, because f prime of x changes well, signs from decreasing to increasing or from increasing to decreasing. Okay. So hopefully that makes sense. I know this is going to be, this is a lot. Okay, so now we're going to go to part E. Now, part E is normally where I have trouble. <laughs> All right, so part E, part e uh, to sketch the graph, that's the part that kind of uh, takes me a little bit. Okay, so what I'm going to do here, this is really optional. If you can do this without it, that, then that's great. Then show me how you're doing it because I would like to know a faster way. Right, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to, put all the relevant information that I just found from A through D. All right, so I know that I'd, I have um, a maximum on negative five. Uh, let's see. I have a minimum at negative one. And what happens at five? Now at five, I have another horizontal uh, tangent line, but I mean, the signs are not gonna change. So notice that this one, I'm going to go from increasing, well, you know what, mm, let me do the derivative first, I'll take it back. I think that will make more sense if I do the derivative. So if I'm doing the derivative, remember that if this above the x-axis, that's going to be positive, if it's below, it's negative. So basically what I'm doing here is I'm rewriting these, okay, so I have, let's see, positive, negative, positive, positive. All right, so that's, that's gonna give me an idea of what this should look like. Now, I'm gonna put on here 
f of x. All right, so f of x is obviously related to this, and this kind of makes it easier for me. So I'm going to be increasing, decreasing, increasing, and increasing. All right, so that's the general idea of the, what my graph is going to look like. Now, finally, what I do have to take into account is the second derivative. All right, so on the second derivative, I'm not going to put the max dependence of f of x, but I'm going to put the points of inflection. So let's see, I have a point of inflection of negative 3, which I'm going to say is around right there. Okay, and I also have another point of inflection at 2. Oh man, I left a big old gap for 2. And I have another point of inflection at 5. How interesting. And I also have a stupid vertical tangent at 3. So I'm just going to write vertical tangent. Just have to take, care and take that into account. Okay, so on that vertical tangent, all right, uh, well, let's not worry about the vertical tangent for now, but let's talk about uh, concave up or concave down. Between negative 3 and 2, I have a concave up, and between 5 and 7, oh yeah, I guess I should put my negative 7 up here and my positive 7 somewhere around here. Okay, between, uh, let's see, concave up between 5 and 7, so this is going to be concave up, and this is going to be concave down. Maybe concave down here, and it's going to be concave down basically here and here, so I have to kind of keep that into account, okay? I'm not writing out of that for a reason, because it's vertical tangent, it's going to make your graph kind of weird. So this is a part that I'm not really looking forward to. So now uh, I'm going to go ahead and draw an axis. Remember this is x, this is f of x. Okay, so this is an axis. I'm going to put a lot of these points here. So I have one, two, three, four, five. Six, seven. Okay. So one, negative one, negative two, negative three, negative four, negative five, negative six, negative seven. Okay. I don't really know a whole lot about the y values on here, so I'm not going to worry about the y values for now, but. And this is really up to you how you do this, but uh, what I like to do is I like to point out where my maximum and minimums are going to be. All right, so I like to kind of do this to just remind myself where my max and mins are going to be located. So let's see, I have one there. I have one at negative one. And you might even want to write, just to so remind yourself, this is going to be a max somewhere. This is going to be a some, card, some sort of minimum, all right? So that way it will make it easier on you. Now, after that, it's really up to you if you want to put the points of uh, inflection, which, are, which is where it changes concavities. Uh, concavity, I'm sorry. You're going to, but I'm going to do that, all right? I'm going to go ahead and do that also. 